Hello. So I thought today I'll just show you a little um, little trick that I use when I'm recording guitars um, to make sure that everything is in time and sounds absolutely perfect. So what I've got here is um, a bit of a track that I've been working on. Um, and what on earth is that? Uh, oh, it's zoomed in far too far. Um, yeah, and uh, it's got some really fast palm muted guitar um, pieces. I'll just play you it really. And now, if I play it in time with the drums, you'll hear how it actually, like every downstroke of that palm mute, is perfectly in time with the kick. So, um, so if I grab this out over here, uh, I can show you exactly how that is done. So, um, obviously, these are the tracks are doubled up. The guitar's doubled up. Uh, one's panned to the left, one's panned to the right, as you would do with a standard um, guitar. The key thing here, though, is that I am using um, a software amp, and uh, in my particular uh, plugin of choice is uh, PodFarm because it's what comes with the audio interface um, and part of the reason why I brought it in the first place um, and so that's what's creating all of the, the guitar tone. Um, what I've actually got here, this is the raw recording um, straight from the guitar. So I plug the guitar into the audio interface, um, use the PodFarm when I'm playing, a separate app and at the same time into, the, into live I'm recording the actual um, raw guitar sample. Uh, so if I switched off the amp, that's what this would sound like. Which, <laughs> as you can tell, is a bit kind of crap, really, isn't it? Um, so yeah, so this is um, this is it with the amp, as you would expect. Um, so. What little trick are you talking about, Andrew? I thought you say. I know, I know, I'm getting to it, I'm getting to it, I'm getting to it. Uh, so if we go in here and look at the actual waveform of the track, you can see here um, that I'm using Ableton's warp feature um, to put in time with the track. And if you look, I actually recorded this at 98 BPM. Now my suggest my suspicion is that that was actually 100 BPM. Um, but if I uh, if I turn off the warp you can hear it as as it was recorded. So because that is uh, is all downstroke palm muted, that's a really chuggy sound that I wanted to get. I couldn't actually play it quick enough at 150 BPM, which is the trap, it's the tempo of the track, um, to get it to be perfectly on time with the beat. Uh, so. I slowed the whole thing down and because uh, I use MIDI drums uh, it meant I could just turn it right down, it wasn't a problem at all. And then uh, I sped it back up again. Now a key thing that I did here and what I do with all of my guitar tracks, even the ones I record properly at you know, normal um, tempo, uh, is um, that you can, you can quantize this. So the same way that you can select um, MIDI in a MIDI track, and you can move it about and put it perfectly on uh, on beat. You can do the same thing with audio. Um, and the key thing here, as I'm surprised actually that I've still got this on beats, but if you put it on Complex Pro, um, it works best on Complex Pro with anything like this, um, and it works best with audio uh, with um, vocals as well. Uh, but this means that you can actually go through and you can move this and manipulate its timings. So, um, and you can quantize it because, uh, again, if I sort of turned that off and that one off, maybe that one and a few more, you can see it's pretty close to being on on beat. But if I select this and I click quantize, perfectly on beat, um, and that then means that everything perfectly lines up. Now, this is why it's important. This only works if you've recorded the guitar directly in. If you try to do that with the um, sample from the amp, you'd make it sound horrendous. Um, but the key thing here is that the amp and 
the distortion and everything else is applied after the warping feature. Um, so to just give you kind of like an idea of how this uh, how this works and how much you can manipulate this, um, if I play just the start here, um, these these sort of triplets here. Now I can manipulate any one of those if I want to. So if I say that I put that one on here, but I want this one to move over here uh, and be a triplet there instead, and maybe move that one as well, then I can do that and it will sound like this. Now it sounds a bit weird here uh, because I'm stretching it too far, but if you were just to kind of manipulate that ever so slightly, I mean you can actually see as well, if you zoom into the waveform that's actually slightly out. Uh, and it means that you can move it perfectly back in time. Um, and I've done this with the bass on here as well, so it works the same way. So again, Hod Farm, open that up, is providing the bass amp and the cab. Uh, and what I should say about this bass, actually, another little trick, a little bonus trick just for this video. Um, if I go over here uh, and bring up the original raw you can see how I've transposed it down by an octave. Because actually, my guitar, because I don't have a bass, I had a bass, it's gone a bit weird, a bit warped, and all sorts, I can't really play it anymore. But what I do is I put the guitar on the bridge pickup and record it like normal with like a clean tone. And if I put it back to zero, it sounds like this. <laughs> Normal, normal guitar tone running through a bass amp sounds a bit boomy, but it's normal. But then if you pitch it down 12 semitones, it's a bass. And once again, I've done that trick where I've matched up all of those triplets perfectly with the tempo. Again, you can see how it just, it's just ever so slightly out, but that is enough when you've got something as tight as this. Uh, to be sounding really weird so you just select those right click and quantize and perfectly on beat in the same way you would with midi and the outcome is this so there you go so it's just a little a uh, little tip i thought that i would share with you all um, yeah, in case you were interested, and uh, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? Like, how many of the big bands do this all the time? I'm sure most of them can play well enough, they don't need to do this. But uh, you, you kind of wonder just how much, you know, just this, because everything's got to be perfect these days, hasn't it? Everyone expects perfection. So, uh, yeah, uh, anyway, I should pan that back to the left. Um, so, yeah, so thank you for watching. Um, if you did like the video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and hit that bell um, icon so that you'll be notified every time I upload videos. I'm going to try and do more of these now that I've figured out how to get the audio from the audio interface uh, into OBS to record along with the camera and the microphone and it all sounding okay. So there'll be a lot more to come. Stay tuned.